Math 31, welcome to example two. So let's see if we can write the first five terms of the alternating sequence t sub n equaling 4n over negative 2 to the n. And if you're wondering, like, well, why is this an alternating sequence? I don't see my alternator of negative 1 to the n or negative 1 to the n plus 1. Let's think about negative 2 to the n. All right, I'll just make a little note on the side here so we can talk about this. Oops, that's, let me get that not too close so it's not confusing. All right, so I think you'll give me that negative two can be written as negative one times two. And I can raise that to the n power. All right, and because I have multiplication inside this parentheses, I actually can distribute the exponent. So this becomes negative one to the n times two to the n, and there is our hidden alternator. Right. Remember in example one, I said common alternators are negative one to the n and negative one to the n plus one. So our alternator is in here. It's just kind of hidden and masked because there's a negative two to the n. All right, so with that, let's get going. Let's find t sub one. So if I want the first term in my sequence, yes, I'm using a different letter than a, but that's okay. Same rules apply. So I'm gonna have this become four times one over negative two to the first power. So four times one is four in ratio to negative two winds up being negative two. So if I'm keeping track, the first term in my sequence is negative two. Okay, let's figure out what the rest are. So t sub two, I'm gonna plug in two for n. So this is gonna be four times two over negative two squared. So I'm looking at, I believe eight over positive four. Be careful, we do have an alternating sequence so I do need the signs to alternate, and this is good. So far I have a negative, then a positive. So my guess, even though I haven't done it, is I should have a negative number coming out of t sub three. So let's find t sub three. We should go four times three over negative two cubed. All right, four times three is 12. Negative two cubed is negative eight. And it is not negative six. This is negative two times negative two times negative two. So when I simplify, I get the fraction negative three halves, and that's great. I was banking on getting a negative number because I do have that alternator there. And in the same vein, I know when I go to my next term, this should be positive, and then the fifth term should be negative. So let's see how we're doing here. All right, can we still see what I'm working with? Yeah, so t sub four will be equal to four times four over negative two to the fourth. Well, four times four is 16, negative two to the fourth is also 16. So this ratio is one. So I'm picking these apart, I got one more to go. So t sub five will be four times five. And we've got negative two to the fifth. So that is 20 over negative 32. All right, so those are both divisible by four. So I think I'm looking at negative five eighths as the last term in my sequence. All right, and if you want to use set notation, you could say that the first five terms were negative two, two, negative three halves, one, and negative five eighths. Now you do not need to write it up in set notation in squiggly form. If you just said, hey, I figured it out, these are the five terms, and you show me some work, we'd be solid. If you want to get fancy and put it in the squiggles, more power to you, you're on your way to become a mathematician. All right, so with that, I'm gonna flip over to my computer because I wanna teach you yet another way that you can find these sequences and all the terms that go with them on your calculator. So we had the, the way that I showed you to work sequences in example one. This is a more intricate version um, that, can, that can be helpful when we go to graph things. All right, so with that, I'm gonna to flip to my computer and we're gonna take a look at a different way of finding sequence values on your graphing calculator. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye. Hey Math 31, I wanna show you a different way of finding sequence values on your calculator. Uh, we could do the second stat option, go into ops and punch out the sequence, just like we did in example one, but here's a more intricate way. And it's just kind of cool some of the features it has. So if you wanna go into something called sequence mode in your calculator, this is how you do it. Hit your mode key and you've probably never looked at this before, and there's no reason to. 
But there are four modes down here. You see function, which we've been in the entire semester. And you've probably been in function mode. If you even owned the, this calculator before you had this class, you've probably always been in function mode. That's why it's the first one there. It's the most common. There's also parametric mode, polar mode, and you see the SEQ here for sequence mode. So just hold tight. We're going to go activate sequence mode in a moment. But I want you to just watch me for a moment. Let's say I scroll down to my modes and I highlight PAR. All right, I want you to see now that PAR has the black background. Okay, don't do this, just watch. You don't need this for this problem. If I go back to my home screen and I hit this X button, do you see now it pops up a T? All right, and I just wanna point that out. It's not popping up an X anymore, it's popping up a T. And up until now in this class, whenever we've hit that button, it's popped out an X. Okay, so just watch. Again, don't mimic this. You don't want your calculator in this mode. Let's say I go over to polar mode, all right? And now let me go back to my home screen, all right? When I hit this button, what's popping up now? The theta. Do you see the third item written there, right? We had x, t, theta, and n. These four options here correspond to these four modes, function, parametric, polar, and sequence. So we've always been in function mode in this class, which is why that button always popped back out an X. When I moved to polar mode, that button popped out back out a T. Uh, I'm sorry, parametric mode. Polar mode, it popped out a theta, and then watch what happens. And now you can mimic me, all right? Only in this, not in life. If you go into sequence mode and hit enter, right? And let me go back home. Now when I hit that button, the N is showing up. And N is, uh, is typically the letter we use when we're in sequence mode, so that's pretty common. So let me clear this out, all right? And I'll clear this again, but again, we've hit mode and we've transferred this over to um, sequence mode. Now hit your Y equals, it's gonna look very different. So you don't have Y1, Y2, Y3, and all of that. You have all this mu sub N stuff. All right, so your calculator will default by saying, would you like the first term in your sequence and just leave it there. We do want the first term in our sequence, so that is the default, no problem there. All right, what you get to type in for u of n is your sequence formula. So let's type in our explicit formula. So we will have 4n. Now to get the n to activate, I click that x button, or at least the button that we've been clicking this entire semester that has given us x. I wanna divide that out by negative two raised to the n power. Okay, now the thing that you have to do, the thing you have to set your sequence up for is you have to give it a starting point. So I'm gonna scroll down here, and if you remember when we were working these by hand, we found that t sub one was actually negative two. You do need to set your, your t sub one. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna set it to negative two. So what I've told my calculator is I'm starting with the first term. That first term is actually negative two, and now that you know that, crunch all the rest of the terms for me. Let's go into our table function and see what's going on here. So when I hit second and graph and call up my table function, you can see all sorts of options here. Now, we get a bunch of errors because there is no t sub negative 3. There is no t sub negative 2, t sub negative 1. We started with t sub 1 being negative 2, right? And then let's look at, when we scroll down a bit, and let's look at the first few terms, right? t sub 1 was negative 2. Well, that matches what I've got. Right. The second term in my sequence was positive 2. That also matches what I got. Oops, right? We got positive 2. What was the third term? It was negative 3 halves. Well, the third term here is negative 1.5. And negative 1.5 as a decimal is negative 3 halves, the fraction, right? The fourth term in my sequence should have been 1. Well, there it is, right? What's the fifth term? This is negative 0.625. And I would guess, and I, I'm confident I'm going to be right, that negative 5 eighths as a decimal is negative 0.625. Let's just check here. Negative 5 divided by 8. Sure enough, it's negative 0.625. So my favorite part about putting the sequences into the calculator in this mode is that I get this list of the sequence, the terms in the sequence. And when I was doing second stat and the ops, I would have to store it into L1 in order to get that vertical list. Otherwise, it would give me that kind of crappy horizontal list. And if you're not recalling what I mean, let me go back into function mode. 
and show you what I'm saying here. So if I went into function mode and did this, I can hit second stat ops, I can do option five, I can do 4x, it'll be back as x now because I'm back in function mode, divided by negative 2 to the x, comma x, comma 1, comma 5. Right? And when I hit enter, right, then I have to scroll left and right to see all of those numbers. It's not actually too terrible in this example, only because most of these numbers are whole numbers. But when there's fractions with repeating decimals, it, it can get cumbersome. So I really like this, this vertical view. I'm, I'm on board with that. All right, so with that, we're going to move on to writing explicit formulas if I give you the terms of the sequence. So, so far, I've been giving you an explicit formula and asking you to get me the terms in the sequence. Now we're going to go backwards. What if I just gave you this set of information and wanted you to go backwards to the formula? Can we do that? Hope so. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.